Hi, Misha here. And in the week or so when I was taking a break, yeah, that happened with Eagle Moss. And so this could very well be the last model I ever get from them. This is the USS Varian Fry, which is a variant in the Inquiry series. And uh, it's named after a mid 20th century journalist who saved thousands of Jewish lives during the Holocaust during World War II. And uh, I ordered this at the very beginning of December 2021, so about seven months ago, along with the USS Mahi. Um, and the Mahi, I did a video on. Maui, Mahi, but I didn't know if this one was coming in. I thought about canceling it because when I ordered it, I didn't know that it was just really a color variation, but I wasn't even sure it was even going to ship ever, so I wasn't too worried about it. But about two weeks ago, I got a ship notice, and about a week and a half ago, this showed up here. So it's basically the same as the other inquiries I've talked about. And so I didn't really know how to do a video about it. It's not really anything unique or special. But then the announcement of Eagle Moss going out of business came up, which is true and not true. And uh, just for fun, here's the very first model I received from Eagle Moss. The standard size Klingon Katinga. Several years ago. This happened to be the first one I received in the collection. I think this was issue 7. And so I grabbed it. Because this, this was the first. And this could very well be the last. But we don't really know for sure. But I do have a personal story. This, like I said, I ordered in December of 2021. And that was the last order I put in. All the models in that order eventually were shipped to me, but separately. Uh, the Stargate's Daedalus was the first to come in, and then I received the Telerian Observation Craft and Nomad Probe. Then the USS Mahi, or Maui, and now this one. So I don't have any outstanding orders. And with that, I decided last Saturday night to go ahead and pull, place another order to take advantage of some sales. And it was weird. By the time, you know me, I keep a night schedule. By the time I got it in, the order in, it was Sunday morning. I put it in. My card was charged, but I never received the thank you for buying, thank you, you know, email. So the next day, Monday morning, I went to check the Eagle Moss website, and it was down. It was just a holding page. That would have been July 11th. July 12th is when the news started to break, and other people noted websites were down. Now, I want to say, I don't do subscriptions. I never have, probably never will. I've always just gone to the shop eaglemoss.com website, and bought what I want. Or sometimes bought them through Amazon if there was a good deal on there. Either way, that's what I used. <clears throat> and it, it was down. People who went to the subscription-based website thought it was up and running until they actually started clicking on links and trying to go places, and then they get shut down. Likewise, people trying to call or email customer support or live chat with customer support got nowhere. And uh, so it's very clear that business has been suspended. It was made official that the company is in administration or applying for administration, which some have interpreted as bankruptcy. And it is a sort of like bankruptcy, but it's kind of the step before full liquidation. Administration, basically you'll have a, a government or a court assigned uh, party come in as a, as a corporate, as, as a trustee. They will 
assess just how much the company owes, what its assets are, and uh, try to go from there. They'll try to find the new owner, new buyer, or they might consider breaking the company apart and selling it off. That's if it's financially viable. If the administrator can't make it work, then it goes into true liquidation. <clears throat> if it goes there, it's, o it's over. That's when a company is broken apart and its pieces are essentially sold off at auction. <laughs> to, again, this is all to pay off creditors. And uh, Eagle Moss has a number of them. I don't know about 2017 and 2018. They were kind of operating on the edge. But by 2019, they had lost nearly a million dollars after everything was paid. In 2020, they lost over... Or I said dollars, I meant pounds. Sorry, it's late. I've been having a long day out in the sun. <laughs> and in their 2020... Financial reports filed with the British government showed that they had lost over 10,500,000 pounds. And one can suspect that 2021, when reports are available for that year, will not look better. That's because in 2022, Eagle Moss sought loans and uh, they try to keep the ship afloat. And it's assuming that their creditors called due. Now, they're kind of in a sticky position because they don't directly make anything. These models are made in China by companies, and they're using licenses from other companies, Star Trek in this instance. So when kind of looking at their assets, what are they? Again, they don't really have factories. And I was actually surprised to learn that they only employed a little over 100 people worldwide. They have offices in London and New York. That's pretty well known. They have one in Paris that's a little smaller. And they had one in Moscow. Obviously, that's kind of gone now because of other events. And I don't know if the Warsaw office is open, but I think it might have transitioned over to D'Agostini. I'm not sure. I've seen older Eagle Moss things. And today we think of Eagle Moss for Star Trek and other things, but they've actually been around 50 years. I have many of their ships. They did a, a series of one 1100 scale naval vessels, mostly Japanese, but others too. They're pretty nice, honestly. They also did a series of Russian tanks and other armor. Well, sort of. That was also under the Fabri name. I've talked about them in previous videos. Favre was actually a different company, but they merged or were acquired by Eagle Moss a little over a decade ago, around 2010, 2011. So that integrated a kind of a military armor theme. They also did a series of like military watches, replica military watches, which I've never owned, but I've heard people say kind of neat things about. And, of course, they've done part love works. They've done magazines. There's been talk of blaming COVID or the kind of decline at newsstands and print media. At the end of the day, the business just was not profitable and probably hasn't been. Once all the financial records have been revealed, probably hasn't been for a number of years, if we're being honest. And, well... Actually, some of the most recent Star Trek releases have been among my favorite, like the D5 Tanker. And the, I actually like the Mahi variant. This one, again, it's not, but they're kind of niche items. And it seems like the Star Trek collection's been running out of steam for a while. On top of that, they recently ended the uh, Battlestar Galactica collection. But it actually got to 25 issues, so that's pretty good. Unfortunately, other collections barely got off the ground, like the Oroville or the uh, Stargate. A couple of others were in the same position, like the Expanse. So that's kind of sad when you have plans for a collection and you only have three, two, sometimes even one issue. At that point, you just kind of wonder why you even have any. And I have to wonder how much money and time was spent on all these licenses that they weren't able to take financial advantage of. 
in the the factories in China have been kind of in a weird position because of COVID and, and the changing market. And we have to admit, the increasing cost of petroleum and petroleum products has to matter. These are labeled as diecast, but the truth is, on this one, only the saucer and back of the are the nacelles and the underside or are uh, ABS plastics, which is made using, well, oil products. So when oil goes up, the cost of these goes up. Also, transport costs have gone insane all over the world since COVID. Many shipping companies shut down, and those that survived saw an opportunity and raised their bright rates. And this on top again, just the, the cost of fuel. So everything has combined to just raise the price on luxury goods like these. I think it also has to be said that the market for these, the generation, honestly mine, that grew up with uh, the original Star Treks, they're kind of getting into middle age and maybe getting out of the collecting vibe. Or even if they, if they haven't, it's hard to continue something. And this collection was announced in 2013, so it's nearly a decade old. You can only keep people going so long. There's 180 issues in the standard size here. But then that's just the regular Starships collection. You have the universe that this is a part of that they've released about uh, 18 issues, including bonuses like this. There's the Discovery, which is 33 issues. There are the specials, which I believe got over 30. There are the XLs. And then there are the bonus issues, which are small. That D5 Tanker was the recent one. And there's roughly uh, 30 some onto those. So doing the math, you've got over 300 Star Trek models alone. At some point, people get tired, or they run out of space, or they run out of money, or the wife says, what the hell are you doing? Or the husband. I mean, there are probably plenty of women that collect these too. I guess in a perfect world, it would be a husband and wife team, right? My wife tolerates them. But she does like Star Trek at least, so there's that. So yeah, I didn't really know what to say about this model. And almost forgotten about it being seven months ago. <laughs> what about the order I put in on the 11th? My card is still showing a charge, but I'm not sure if it's a pre-authorization, a pending charge, or if it's a real charge. I don't believe at this time they will be shipping because all shipments from China have ceased because Eagle Moss has not paid the manufacturer in China. All this time, they've kind of been blaming China for shipping slowly and kind of blaming the factories over there. But it's starting to look like maybe the reason China was shipping slowly was because Eagle Moss was paying slowly. So, yeah, if you don't pay for product, very few people are willing to sh you know, ship it to you. And... Uh, It'll be interesting to see how these licenses go because you know how China treats license and more of a suggestion than a hard and fast rule. So the, the molds and tooling are over there, but who will get them? Will Eagle Moss go through administration and be restructured? Maybe new ownership, new operation? Maybe they'll divest themselves of excess and begin again? Will they make it all the way to liquidity and just be broken up and no more? I think it'll be more like the latter, although maybe not quite that extreme because, again, the business probably hasn't really been profitable for uh, four or five years. I mean, they're operating at major losses. So it's going to be hard to find someone to take these on, especially if the global recession and whatnot maybe turns into a depression if petroleum costs go up more. Who knows? It's a rocky road right now with events in Ukraine and even in Europe and even in Japan, not to mention the USA. Kind of hard to think about stuff like this. Think about it, when this model came out, like 2014, boy, the world seemed like a more innocent time, didn't it? At least it did to me. A lot has changed in our lives. But that's kind of where we stand right now. Eagle Moss has suspended all operations. You really cannot get a hold of them. No one can. 
and I guess it's just kind of waiting to see how the administration process goes, which could take a couple of months or even the rest of this year, depending on how much has to be sorted through. So we may not have an answer for a while. This, I will say, if I don't get a shipping notice on my order that I placed on the 11th, within, say, 30 days, I will probably just call Visa, my card company, and file for a chargeback. You, you can do that. There's plenty of grounds when the company is no longer communicating. I almost had to do that back in February with that big screwed up order with those Discovery ships. But at the last minute, they, they fixed it finally. But even if they do go under, there's still probably a lot of unshipped product over in China or on the docks in, I don't know, Liverpool, <laughs> who knows. That's going to be sold to someone, probably for very cheap. Now, sometimes what happens, it'll just kind of appear on eBay being shipped from China because, yeah, who really owns it? If the factory made it and hasn't been paid, they'll say they do, and they'll just sell it. So if you missed an issue and want it, check on eBay for a Chinese seller. You might start seeing them pop up later on this year. I have um, I've done that once or twice myself with other product lines because this is not the first series collection that I've been into that was discontinued. But, again, I've been buying the complete model issues. For those people that bought the part works, that were doing the build the Enterprise, I don't know what to tell you. Unfortunately, that thing was always a risk because Eagle Moss has always been a little eh on their shipping, and they've only gotten worse even before COVID. I, COVID gets blamed for it. It's not the truth. They were getting pretty shaky already by 2019. Hell, they were shaky from the beginning, just not this bad, if we're being honest. That said, to date, they never have billed me for something and never, ever shipped it to me. It might take seven months, like the uh, Varian Fry here, but everything they billed me for, eventually, they shipped to me. But that was back when they were still, you know, communicating. <laughs> but that's the problem with Eagle Moss. Their communication's always kind of been lackluster. And now they're pretty much radio silent. I'm sure we'll hear soon, so I don't want to get too in-depth and to speculate too much because I don't really have much of the story. Again, I was, I was kind of out of the loop for a week or two doing my own thing. I kind of get back to it and this crap happens. So... A model that was otherwise very unremarkable to me and I actually regretted ordering because I didn't know, again, remember, I'm blind, that it was just a kind of a recoloring or different scheme, but it wasn't worth fussing, fussing over, frankly. Might have become kind of important because uh, it could be the very last one I ever get. So if nothing else, that'll be special to me. I will say, too, and then I'm kind of hearkening back to the D'Agostini Star Wars collection when that was going on, when you get to these and they get canceled, either they lose the license or the company quits making them, the early issues like this Katinga don't tend to go up too much in value because they built them in large numbers. But the late issues, the last issues, the ones that barely came out, they end up being really damn collectible because usually only a few were ever released into the wild because it was at the tail end. So if you have some of the last issues, some of the universe collection, I have a feeling maybe the 20, or excuse me, the 32 century Starfleet chips from Discovery Season 3 could become quite collectible because they're weird. <laughs> kind of the stuff that barely made it out or the stuff that people don't want today could be desirable tomorrow. That's, of course, assuming Eagle Moss disappears. At the very least, I think we'll see a long disruption and we'll probably see new ownership. But I think it'll probably go further than that unless there's some miracle that lets them become a profitable company again, which, nice wishful thinking, but, yeah, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, there's my extremely brief review of the Varian Fry and talking about the Eagle Moss situation, like the other Inquiry classes. It's a nice model for what it is. I actually like the design, but I like the Mahi and they sell a little better, personally. Oh, well. 
At least I have a three ship strong copy paste fleet now, right? And if anyone knows anything more, please post in the comments. And if anyone has an opinion, please post too. I'm just telling you kind of my crash course this week once I heard about it a couple of days ago. So, um, yeah, there it is. As always, if you could, please do like, share, and subscribe. And next time, we will finally get to that Corgi model I've been promising for two weeks. This is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon.